And here to provide an overview with what big data is and why it matters to business, I know you're going to give a very warm welcome to Peter Judge. Right, well, um, here we are. Let's see if the slides actually, they do. Um, let's start. I know that you are all recruiters, is that right? Yes, yes. you're all recruiters, good. Um, you all have been wondering, am I really a journalist? Do I normally dress like this? No, only when talking to recruiters. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you have uh, recruited anybody for, for a big data job? Whoa, hang on a minute, that's like, I was expecting one hand, we've got at least six went up, this is interesting. Um, how many of you recruited, have recruited people for analytics? Lots, okay, right. Um, we may come to a point when I uh, <coughs> step down and call on one of you to come up and take my place here in that case. But um, that is interesting, that is, that, I mean, um, that tells me that uh, this, uh, this, this sector is actually growing pretty fast. I think if, given the level of development of it, we're getting that level of interest in jobs in the subject. Um, <coughs> so, okay, Tech Week Europe, this is me. Um, that's, that's the site, uh, that's, that's how it looked yesterday, so it's not necessarily the most exciting we've ever looked. And it has the word jobs on it, so we, we, we are interested in covering jobs. We, we um, talk to technology professionals with the idea that we're helping them to understand what's going on, uh, explain stuff and inform them. Um, we're a European publication too, so we have uh, links in multiple languages, which drives us mad. Um, so what is big data? I have fallen into the first trap of big data on this slide by mentioning size, um, because in fact uh, the size of big data is important but that's not actually the important thing. Uh, as Nadine said, <coughs> people have been handling lots of data since the Norman times. Um, and uh, also some of the other attributes of big data probably go back that time. The another of the things that is important in big data is it's multiple kinds of big data. Um, the people that are in the, um, in, in the field uh, like to make um, marketing friendly aggregations of stuff <coughs> and so that they decided that everything to do with big data shall begin with a V. So it has, um, uh, uh, volume is one thing, the volume of data you're covering, it's n essentially driven by the technology. It's now possible to handle <coughs> more data than you thought you could in the past so um, the uh, so, so therefore, almost by magic, the applications emerge that will deal with that level of data. It's, that's the way it works. Um, and as it happens, there are exciting things you can do when you've got the data all together. If you can <coughs> process it and uh, find stuff out from it, that's all kind of obvious. But uh, it's worth mentioning the other things that are different. Um, uh, there's variety. Um, big data isn't all just um, files or database entries. It's not a one huge Oracle database. It <coughs> is going to include um, like uh, emails, um, maybe phone calls, maybe uh, videos, all kinds of things can be thrown into there and the goal of big data is to find ways to um, work with all those different kinds of data um, and get sort of answers out that you might not otherwise get and that kind of made me think of the Normans because I thought you know as well as the um, doomsday book they did have the Bayeux tapestry so they were dealing with um, graphical information as well as um, data information so there's a uh, Variety has been around for a while, and volume has been around for a while, as I'm sure those of you who've recruited analytics people will know that for a long while, companies have had um, business intelligence systems, decision support systems, can anybody remember any other buzzwords for this um, ever-changing area of technology? Um, 
they've all been there and they've always these things have always promised to hold um, everything your company knows and let you process it find information out about it I guess data warehousing is probably the um, the, the most persistent of these buzzwords um, <laughs> looking for confirmation there but if you're yeah I mean uh, but the difference between data warehousing and the kind of big data we're talking about now is that a data warehouse is um, a bit like a warehouse it's difficult you, you have to get stuff in and out of it you have to take the stuff you want to know process it put it in the data in, in the data warehouse and under so you can then understand what it is when it's there there's um uh, there's been a lot of action on etl it's export transform and load is that right that's yeah right. good so and yeah uh, and though that's a, a time consuming and possibly difficult process of getting your data from one source turning it into something that can put it into this um, data warehouse and then the data warehouse crunches away um, since when data warehouses came <coughs> out we were dealing with not massively fast uh, processes and storage was expensive so your company would have just one and you would have to book a session on it it would take a long while to do that to, to research it to come back with an answer you had people who were in analytics who in my imagination correct me if i'm wrong they probably wore white coats um, they certainly didn't talk to normal people um, and um, that's that's what uh, that, and uh, but um, there's a sort of transition going on here because when you're researching, when you're looking for big data people, you probably get analytics people who want to be big data people, or people who are going into this idea of processing lots of data. Um, may and it might be that they're doing it without the grounding in sort of analytics. Analytics people are very very formal. Um, I went to a lunch briefing recently on big data and the analyst they brought along to talk to us was an old school um, analytics analyst um, analyst in terms of in the sense of you know someone from IDC who comments on the subject and this analyst um, uh, we were all after sort of um, journalistic news about big data and she um, wanted to talk about semantics um, taxonomy. She was very, very big on taxonomy. That you know, before the data goes in, you need to understand exactly what's going on with it. So, you know, the the picture we have of analytics is it's a, a small, rarefied, esoteric um, space, and now um, the uh, the technology has arisen, which allows it that to be democratised, to be brought out to more places, um, and it can be done quicker. That's where the other V comes in for velocity. Um, the, um, uh, the, the big data marketing people have come up also with uh, value because they want to show, say that um, big data is worth a lot to you. That this stuff which um, previously, I mean, everybody's got lots of data. A lot of it just sits on hard drives, goes to archive, it's never seen again. Whereas the idea is there's lots of value in it you can get back. And so people selling the idea of big data will say value. There's another V that we get to in a later slide, so watch for that. And um, since, since size actually is important in this, I thought I'd say what an exabyte is. Um, if, if, if you're dealing with exabytes, it definitely is big data. Um, is that true? If you're dealing with exabytes, no, you might just have exabytes in your, uh, in your archive. If you're dealing with exabytes and actually getting answers out of it reasonably quickly, then it's big data. And one exabyte is one quintillion bytes, or 1,000 petabytes, one billion gigabytes. So, okay, um, here's the characteristics as um, presented in um, uh, a, uh, an infographic we once produced uh, with IBM. This is just one slice of one of those long infographics that slow scroll down your screen until you get bored with them by the bottom. You'll see the other V that comes in there is veracity. Um, a really good big data application will take the information you have and will 
will in some way be sort of checked and verified and you'll know you've got stuff that's actually worth something and you're not sort of um, dealing with old data, out of date data um, and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, they put value at the bottom with a, a nice little pile of coins. So I'm afraid to say the word coins, it's obviously not very big. <laughs> so, um, there's um, uh, another diagram, um, how it works. Um, the, um, you, you collect data at point of interaction. Now, um, you, uh, yes, it, it moves, you react to it, you get a good model, you get, a, you get it and you, you analyze it. Not quite sure how, I think that's, that satisfies the need for um, a box diagram, which you have to have, all presentations have to have one. Um, <laughs> you won't, there's, there's no test on that one, you're okay. Um, so, it's just analytics rebranded, that's what I said earlier, and a greater emphasis on speed, <coughs> removing the costly phases of loading. That's where we are. Who's using it? Now this is the question. Um, clearly several people are using it because you've recruited some, and um, if we went to, if we get, uh, maybe, maybe at some point you'll, you'll tell us who, who they are, because it turns out that pretty much everybody has lots of data of one sort or another. The typical one we get told about is something like a retailer, um, say Tesco or whoever, finding out something they didn't know. And I get slightly mm, maybe bored, maybe irritated with the sort of anecdotal big data stories we get. You know, has, has, ever, has anyone heard about? Has everyone heard about the, um, the girl in New York whose parents? Um, blank faces, so I'll tell the story. Um, <laughs> apparently, um, in, in, in New York, um, there's a girl who uh, shared a computer with, her, with the rest of her family, and they noticed, and her parents noticed, they started, they were getting um, adverts at them, um, targeted by uh, keywords and an analysis of the past activity on the computer. They, they were getting adverts for nappies, uh, baby care products, <laughs> <laughs> they had a teenage daughter, um, and apparently there was something she hadn't been telling them, but through her interactions with um, online shopping sites and other sources, uh, she'd been telling other people and it was possible for the retailers, the giant big data machinery behind the uh, sites she was using to find out that she was pregnant and um, start offering her and her family uh, those products. Now, <coughs> I've tried to track that one down. I found it referenced in, um, I think in the New York Times. Um, I'm not 100% sure that somebody hasn't just invented that one as a theoretical possibility. Um, the uh, the other thing you sometimes hear, and actually some of these date back, they're, they're retreads of old data warehousing um, war stories. The, um, uh, the supermarket chain that, uh, Nappy's come into again, I'm sorry. The, the supermarket chain that started placing beer by the nappies because it's dad who gets sent out to buy the nappies. <laughs> and they apparently found that by analysing the data that was collected at the tills and extracting this small nugget of information that no one else would have known about. Um, and you see, my problem with some of these, with, well, my problem with, with, with the first of those stories is that it's, um, uh, it sounds like someone's made it up. My problem with the second one is it sounds plausible, but it also sounds like something which um, a reasonably astute shop manager might figure out for themselves. Um, all too often when we hear, you know, big data is amazing, it's powerful, <coughs> the things it finds out are very important and very, un and the, th the things we get told very often are things that you might well have worked out for yourself. Um, and um, so I, I think there's a lot more going on well, I hope there's a lot more going on. And the re uh, one of the things that I'm told is that the, the reason why all the stories are so kind of shallow and anecdotal about this is that 
the stuff that's going on is so important that people aren't talking about it. I'm never sure whether to believe that line or not. If, if something's new, I think people would be talking about it, really. Um, and I think people are just still working out how to do it. Um, I just put a quick list there of the people I thought that could use uh, big data. I'm sure all of you could think of many more. Retailers comes up a lot, finance firms, um, so they know which product to irritatingly try and sell you uh, when you're on the phone to them. Um, although actually, I've got, an, I've got a real example of big data application because it happened to me, uh, but it does unfortunately show the immaturity of big data. Um, whenever, almost every time I try to use, it's not, I'm exaggerating now, no. <laughs> Quite often, when I try to use my debit card on, on the phone, I get refused. And that's because my bank is now analysing transactions in real time. So, um, recently, um, I, and then, because it's in real time, they get the alert in real time, they ring you in real time, with an automated phone call, which of course delights everybody. You, the phone rings and it's actually an automated call ringing you, and it's your bank, and before they'll even tell you what they're calling about, you have to go through all their um, uh, authentication processes. Um, when, I, when I got through those, they said, your card has been stopped, we're refusing this payment on it, and um, do you recognise these two? Um, by this stage, I think, at the next stage after this, I actually got to a person. And I said, uh, you know, why is this? And they said, well, um, one day last week, uh, this, on this card, there was a £12 payment to Battersea Dogs Home, followed by a £900 payment to John Lewis. And apparently, their fraud analysis people have ascertained that when you, uh, that when you steal someone's identity, often, apparently, take this down and note it, it's not going to be useful to you because they're onto it already. The first thing <laughs> you do is you put through a small payment to a charity in order to make the card people, to reassure them that you're real, that you're a nice person. And then you go out and burn the credit on uh, <laughs> stuff. <coughs> so, no, I think that what this tells me is Big data is being used. I mean, that is actually, that is real time, it's real time analysis of a lot of transactions, and they're picking out that pattern and stopping it in real time. It tells me it's happening, but it tells me it's still immature. Um, okay, big science, I'm sure, you know, big data is sort of finding out patterns of health and things like that that uh, people are. Um, so, you know, if you can spot a trend <coughs> in health data, you can maybe go in and interact and use preventative medicine to stop it. And um, the government obviously wants to do lots of stuff with big data. And um, I think, you know, at some point during what I'm saying, uh, the word privacy will have cropped up in some of your minds, I'm sure. And that is going to be a big issue that uh, big data practitioners will need to be fully trained up and aware of. Um, if you're doing this stuff on data, um, you know, do you have the permission to use it? even if it's uh, anonymised, it, it might still be so, it includes so much data that, whoever, that, it, that it's easy to find out who it's about. Okay, um, a little bit on the technology. I, um, <laughs> like CW Jobs, Tech Week isn't, we aren't actually technologists, we are, what was it, an affiliate of the IT industry. Uh, <laughs> um, Yes, I sometimes, I, I sometimes use the word parasite about myself. But, um, <laughs> so, but um, the, uh, the, the big movements in big data um, have come from, as you might expect, Google. Also, Yahoo, um, who uh, created the MapReduce parallel <coughs> programming idea. This, now, the, the fundamental idea that's gone into this is that... Um, Hardware is now cheap. If you've got a big problem, you can just throw a lot of cheap servers at it, all with a lot of cheap storage attached to them. And the trick is to be able to break the problem down into chunks, which can be done by those. Um, and 
this, it turns out, um, can't be done very easily with the big traditional databases like Oracle. Um, even the newer sort of open source databases like MySQL, etc. Um, the, it, they, they needed to, to divert their own. You can't really call them databases. Is there a better word for them? Um, I suppose uh, key value pair stores. <laughs> right, key value pair stores. That's a phrase to look for in CVs, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Um, and um, in that area, uh, there is Hadoop, which comes up a lot in these uh, in these things. Um, like everything good in the IT industry at the moment, the exaggerated, uh, it's coming through open source, which may be an issue for you, I don't know, but um, open source means the code is developed, um, it's free to use, it's free to copy, free to amend, and that means that the capabilities get evolve very quickly, the flaws get ironed out very quickly, but no one owns it. Um, there are company names who specialise in it, and um, the ones I'm aware of are uh, that are sort of in the fundamental end of, sort of pushing the technology forward. The places where the uh, big data developers are working, the developing the tools, um, Cloudera, uh, Map R, Hortonworks, probably a few others, and um, much in a similar kind of way to which open source projects like Linux get through into actual use, the, uh, the larger companies have partnerships with these developers and they take on technologists to uh, implement it and to make it work with their projects. So Oracle does a lot in big data even though it you might it might look as if it's kind of complementary or even hostile to what they're doing and the things they're doing are making sure that mm. oracle databases can be um, connected and export into um, and even paired in real time possibly with um, key value pair stores pair value key stores <laughs> something like that right okay <laughs> so the, that that stuff happens and um, IBM is big in big data, Oracle is big in big data, Microsoft wants to do big data. Um, they're all out there sort of working on ways to help um, uh, uh, end user companies get the most out of big data um, through like uh, integration and service uh, deals using big data technology. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, the, the, the the area is kind of emerging in that way. Um, okay, and obviously the fact that the cloud is out there means that anybody can get lots of storage uh, straight away. So, if, you know, there are if you are a, a, an end user company, you haven't had lots of big data, um, you've gathered it from all your customers, um, it's really cheap for someone to say, pick up the open source software, um, grab a bit of storage on Amazon and uh, put the stuff out there and try things on it. Um, you don't actually have to get um, approval to buy lots of new servers and install stuff on them. It can just happen. Um, and happen by people who don't have specific training or skills in it, but they're interested and they're finding the knowledge out there. What do you think companies are asking for when it comes to big data services? Is it guidance to manage in-house, or are they looking to outsource it? I mean, there's so many so cheap ways of doing it, for well, the cloud. What, what's your sense of it at the moment? I think big data projects are in-house at the moment, for sure. Um, just because uh, this stuff is your company's data, it's so crucial to the, to the, to the, to the organisation. I don't think you're going to sort of um, let it out of your hands into other people's, especially when big data is uh, a field where you're looking for unexpected insights. It just seems, you know, if, if, if you're going into the unknown, you probably do want to do it with yourself. And I know you mentioned your graph. In fact, there's your picture. Should we go back again so people can have a look at that? So oh, yes. Going forward. 
Yeah. So you mentioned about that. Now that is actually on your website yeah. at the moment on yes. Tech Week Europe. <laughs> Um, and obviously the survey that CW Jobs put together, a slightly bit more positive take on it, yes. mainly because it's directed at people looking for jobs right. in the recruitment sector, whereas this picture Ooh. paints something which is even more in its earlier days. Do you think um, it is going to grow, big data? Ooh. Do you think there is, we've got something in this? Oh, for sure. There's, there's no doubt about it at all. This is growing. Um, I would think for the recruiters the interesting thing would be how can you tell whether someone actually has the skills they, they, they want? Yeah. I'm thinking, um, when you were looking for Oracle database people, there were training courses, and you could, you know, you, you could be an approved Oracle professional or whatever. Um, and I really kind of want to come back, did, would, would anybody who has, can we, ask, can we do this, can yes. we ask them? Anybody who has recruited a, um, a big data person for a big data job, can we ask you how you did it and what qualifications you looked for? Did you say they? Did you ask them whether they knew about key value pair stores? <laughs> You've all gone quiet now. <laughs> you didn't realise when you would put your hands up. Would anyone have to volunteer information no. on that? That's okay. Yeah, the gentleman. I knew you were. You yes. look like. Would well, you get a microphone to you actually? If we just hold on a second. <laughs> We've got the power on. Let's use it. There we go. If you'd like to introduce yourselves as well. I am Carl from Bridge Oval. Um, primarily. The way I did it was probably a bit more old school and actually asked them about the size of data. So looking at how much volumes and columns they've actually worked with in the past. Right. And that way, when you're qualifying it to the client, you can actually talk about the kind of access they've had exposure to. Yes. And that was probably the easiest way to categorize it. Right. And um, given the vague and fluffy definitions we've given you, was this actually kind of new wave big data or was it old school analytics? Uh, I'd probably say a bit of both. Yeah. So, a lot of the former companies he'd worked for were probably the older, fluffy stuff that we talked about. And yeah. what we're talking about now is how much access they got in terms of the real time data they were working with and the volumes and trends that they got out of that. So, the, the qualification was less about the specification but more about their interest. Yes. And that's the way they were right. interviewing and the candidate. And, and were they kind of setting up a new project and looking for somebody who would have ideas to sort of... Very much Greenfield, yeah. Gosh. Okay. Is that an answer you were expecting to hear? Um, yeah, I think, you know, most... At, the, at this stage, it's, you know, looking at the slide, you know, most big data projects will be new projects. Most, you know, mm. f for most people, you... you most people recruiting a big data person are probably recruiting their first big data person. Um, and uh, most of the people there... Um, I don't know, uh, and uh, I, I would guess that a lot of the people they're recruiting are either just in the process of becoming big data people because it's more exciting than being an analytics person. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, and was this w was the person you found able to point to sort of uh, paper qualifications at all? You're going to ask him to name the person in a minute, <laughs> aren't no. you? I'm, 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 <laughs> come on, come on, yeah. we're yeah. Yeah. We, we, work, we work yeah. on this steadily. Right. This is your last question, then we're going to broaden it out to the rest of the audience. So. No, feel free no, to answer. No comment. Uh, yeah, yeah, no comment. No That's comment. A good journalist no, answer, there, actually. Yeah, there, yeah. Wasn't, there wasn't any qualifications, really. No, because, because Other than their education was helpful. Because, yeah, and because, correct me if, if, if I'm wrong, there are not yet any paper mm. qualifications in big data. Okay. I'm waiting for someone to correct me. Speak now or else hereafter. So uh, physics. Yeah. So question down there, was it computer yeah. science? No, it was physics. Okay, yeah. so thank you very much for that. Any other questions from the floor you'd like to ask? There's a question at the back there, gentlemen there. If you, again, if you'd like to say your name and where you're from and your question. Good morning to you. Morning. Uh, Russell Dalgleish, MBN. Um, we specialise quite heavily in this particular space. And what we're noticing is that a number of the candidates we put forward to large corporates, the Channel 4s, ITVs of this world, don't actually have a specialism in IT. They have strong background skills in physics and mathematics and statistics, and also a great interest in, in marketing. So they may have worked the likes of Dunhumby. So there seems to be a perception in the market that this may not just be a pure IT play. I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that. And Dunhumby, obviously, the people behind the Tesco yep. club card. Um. That's 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 in, that's interesting. I don't suppose any of them had fine art, did they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but seriously, I mean, the the, the, the uh, 
they're working at a level where um, you're looking at possibilities and being being too far down into the um, the depths of the technology might um, it might take you away from being able to think differently and, and find out new possibilities. Is that the kind of thing that you're you're finding? I would, yeah, I, um, I'm. I, I'm not. I, I, I would say I'm. You know, I, I hadn't even thought of, th of that angle, and um, now that you've said it, I can see why it would be so. Well, thank you very much for raising that. No food for thought there. Any other questions before we move? Ah, yes, Richard's got a question there. Did you want to ask a question or? You're just scratching, are you? <laughs> okay, <laughs> Richard, and <laughs> um, we'll get your uh, microphone to you. There we go, Richard. If you just take it from Laura there, pass it along. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, I, I was reading, I've been reading up a bit about <clears throat> big data, and I read an interesting article in the uh, Harvard Business Review. It was, uh, the author was a, uh, one of the chief researchers at Microsoft, and she was warning very much, especially in the sort of government, one of the, the categories you put up there was about government using big data, and she was very, um, she flagged up a big warning around that. Uh, and the example she gave was the sort of hurricane on the east coast of America, where the government was um, collecting all the tweets about it. But because of the nature of Twitter, they found that a, a vast majority of the tweets came from sort of Manhattan hipsters, <laughs> rather than the people <laughs> where the hurricane was worse, sort of Coney Island, mm -hmm. Rockaway, and places yeah. like that, you know, traditionally more blue collar areas where uh, people don't tweet as much. And so the information they got was actually uh, skewed. It was yes. and so. What she argued for was deep data rather than big data. Mm. Right. I wonder what your view might be about that. Yes, just just because it's big, it's not necessarily clever. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, and uh, yes, I think um, that's something that it, it, there's a danger that projects will um, lose that in the excitement. I suppose. I mean, uh, we we've put veracity in as one of the V's, and that would be. Know, making sure it's not just that it's true, it's as close as possible to the whole truth of the question you're asking about. Um, and you talked about deep data mm. rather than big data. I wonder if big data is a confusing term because I've heard a moot to change it to smart data. So, you yeah. know, are we on to you know, a better terminology if we call it smart mm. data? Because in the end, it's, you yeah. know, we have all these facts and data, mm. it's how you analyse it and interpret yeah. it. Yes, sir. I think you may be right. It might be too early to go on to the next buzzword because we haven't quite got everybody fed up with this buzzword yet. Yeah. Um, so we're we sticking to, with big data at yeah, the moment. Yeah, big data. We need, we need to get people really, really fed up with hearing about big data before we change. Before we switch <laughs> it to something like deep data or deep smart data. data. Or, yeah. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Any other comments or questions you'd like to ask? So finally, do you think it is here to stay? Oh, gentleman there. Sorry, no? Just passing the microphone <laughs> back. You got all excited then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. When the music starts, oh, yeah. you get to ask a question. Yeah. So finally, do you think it is here to stay? This is not just a passing fad. Uh, yes, yes. I mean, and um, you know, e e even if it becomes so uh, ingrained in the process of everything that we never talk about it again, big data is clearly going to be here. The the uh, the. The amount of um, data, the amount of processing we can do on it is just con increasing to the level where it's, it, it's, there's no way we can go back on it. Well, Peter, thank you very much for your time. I know you're going to stick around mm -hmm. for the rest of the morning. I'm sure you're going to comment and chip in for the, the next presentation when we're doing the QA as Absolutely. well. But in the meantime, thank you very much to Peter Judge.